welcome to the Blissful Stitch Podcast. My name is Christina. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Today is February 23rd of 2019, which means January came and went, and I never wished you guys a happy new year. So happy new year. I hope you guys are keeping up with your new year's resolutions. I wish that I could say the same for myself that I have been. Although I have a little bit, I still could be doing a lot better with my new year's resolutions, especially in the health and fitness journey. <laughs> but as far as um, crocheting and knitting and even sewing, yes, I've been diving into sewing recently. Um, I've been doing pretty well. Uh, this is my podcast all about crocheting and knitting and sewing and any other type of crafty thing that I am enjoying at the moment. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. It's been about three months since my last podcast. Uh, so I have accomplished quite a bit since then. Um, I've been really into sewing, like I just mentioned, and I've been making project bags, which have been super, super fun to do. Um, it's really the only thing that I've been sewing, um, along with like a little basket and a little pouch, like little trinket things and fixing up garments and stuff. But my main focus has been making project bags, which I'm super excited about and super excited to share with you. Um, again, how are you guys? I feel so nice to be back in podcasting. I've been wanting to podcast for the longest time. And this right now is my third attempt because I just found something wrong in every one that I was doing <laughs> or the prior two but I think this is gonna come out good. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I have a few finished objects to show you. I have a few whips, I have a half object, um, but I also have a couple of finished objects that I don't have here to actually show you, um, but I can insert a picture for one of them. Um, so yeah, let's just dive right into it. Uh, you can grab your drink or your snack or whatever it is that you are munching or sipping on. And let's go ahead and get started. So let's get started with my finished objects. Um, I have a few, so I'll just start with what's in front of me. Um, I recently made this hat. I knitted it in the round. I used um, size nine millimeter, uh, 16 inch uh, knitting needles. And this yarn, forgive me that I don't know the colorway or um, the brand of it. I do believe it was loops and threads, but I just don't know offhand the, the colorway of it. But it's super nice, it's super pretty, super um, cozy, just super everything. I use that word probably a little too much <laughs> but yes this is my first finished object to show you and one that I'll just quickly mention as well I also made my daughter my oldest daughter a pom-pom hat a scarf and crocheted fingerless gloves um, but I don't have that here to show you and she's had it for a while already so it's not looking as new as it should um, so I don't have that to show you, but I have worked on another hat, a scarf, and crochet fingerless gloves for her as well. So that's my first finished object. My second finished object I love to show you is, I don't know if you remember in my last podcast, um, I was working on my first brioche project and I wanted that project to become a hat but it started becoming too wide. I, so I probably cast it on too many stitches um, to begin with, but it decided it wanted to be a cow. Look how pretty. And this is using Handmade Home Fibers yarn. Um, this light color here is Tea Time. And in the middle, the contrasting color is Merlot. So this was a super fun and uh, therapeutic knit. I really, really liked um, taking my time in knitting on this and I love the rhythm of the brioche. So I definitely know it's not gonna be my last brioche project. I would love to get to the point where I can um, knit up one of Andrea Mowry's uh, patterns that deal with brioche. Um, her patterns are gorgeous. I would love to get to the point that I can knit those projects which 
I'm going to make it a 2019 goal besides my um, make nine, which I do have on, on my Instagram, which, by the way, I did not even mention. You can tell that I've been haven't done this in a while, but my Instagram, you can find me on Instagram as the Blissful Stitch, as well as Ravelry as the Blissful Stitch and also Pinterest as the Blissful Stitch. I'm not too active on um, Ravelry in the sense of having a project page and stuff. I usually just use it for a, a hub of patterns, but I do want to start uploading a, um, my projects on there so that if you guys have any questions, you can kind of refer to my projects that I'm working on um, there. And also to just kind of keep me accountable for my projects, what I've started, um, how far I am into them and just kind of tracking my projects and my finished projects, especially for 2019. This is my year, my year of learning, my year of doing. So I'm excited about that. But back to <laughs> my finished objects. I loved making this and I can't wait to make another brioche project. The only thing that I would do different with this cowl is the bind off at the top. Um, I just did a regular standard bind off and I found that it made um, the top too not stretchy enough. So I wanna learn how to do a stretchier bind off. Um, I can only really wear this cowl when I have my hair down and it's manageable. So I can, you know, just tug it down my head and, and have it here. Um, but if I have a ponytail or a bun, it's surely just gonna mess up the hair when I put it on and I don't wanna have to, you know, redo my hair after I've done it but I do like um, seeing this underneath my coat um, I have a black jacket so I love the way the the burgundy the merlot color um, and the the tea time colorway the light color looks really nice with the jacket and sometimes I also um, bend it down like this to make it a two-tone which is really really nice so this was um, my first brioche project surely will not be my last i love it it's super squishy and again i want to get to the point where i can knit up one of andrea maori's patterns that have brioche in it for sure um now another project that i want to mention which again if you remember in my last podcast it was one of the cardigans that i was making it was a bigger project and it was the everyday cardigan but i was making it more longer to be able to cover my tush um and i did finish that which i will insert a picture here So that cardigan came out super cozy, um, really comfortable. I loved wearing it. I love wearing it, not that I don't wear it anymore. I love wearing it. Um, my daughter actually likes to put it on too. She feels cozy in it as well. Um, that was a big accomplishment. It was a big project and I was so happy when it was done. And I'm glad to have that as a part of my wardrobe. As well, the first time that I used it, or the first time that I wore it rather, I used um, my faux leather leggings and I thought the fiber against the faux leather material just worked out so nice. It looks so pretty. Um, yeah, but that was a wonderful project. I think that I might be making another one, but with a different yarn, um, but just still keeping the length to it. I love how long I made it to be able to cover like past my tush. So it. I like that style. Um, now, as far as the rest of my finished objects, they're sewing projects. Um, I don't have any other, um, oh, you know what? I do have a half finished object and if it fell to the floor, one second. So my half finished object is the sock. I don't have a sock blocker yet, unfortunately. Um, I really, I, I gotta get on it. I gotta get, I have to have a sock blocker by the next podcast or if it takes too long to deliver probably the, the following one but you know what I mean um yeah so this is using Patton's Croy yarn in I believe the clover colorway and this was initially for my husband um but my husband when he tried it on which I should have figured that he would complain about this but He's very pick, picky with texture, and I think the texture of the Patton's Croy just doesn't sit well with him, so I don't 
think he's gonna enjoy wearing these I could tell just by his face so um yeah I guess they'll just be a pair for me my first pair for 2019 and I will um still fish around for different yarns to um, find one that's suitable for him that he likes to to wear because I do want to make my husband a pair of socks for sure but it's just um, regular stockinette a plain vanilla sock with a heel flapping gusset and that's it so that's my half to fin half finished object that I'd like to show you that deals with um, knitting and fiber material uh, so now I'm going to get into my sewing finished projects, um, finished objects or projects, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I figure from the future, I am going to have a separate sewing segment. Um, but I figure since I haven't been on here for a few months that I'm just going to kind of put everything that I finished into one category. And for future podcasts, I'll just have a separate segment for the sewing. But my first uh, sewing project, I guess I'll show you. Again, I'm making project bags mostly. Um, is this one here. So pretty with a gold zipper. Super nice. It's this black and white polka dot material here. And I have a little cherry print pattern here. And I don't know what to call these. It's so you could put like a, a keychain. So I guess I'll just call it a, a tag, I guess. Um, I have that to match the inside prints, which is a pretty, um, uh, how would I describe it? Floral, but design floral. I, I don't know how to describe the pattern, but, or the fabric rather. But this is my first bag. I love it so much. It's one of my favorites. Um, I'm not too fond of the metal zipper. I find that it kind of gets stuck a little bit when you're zippering it up. Nothing to do with um, the sewing and the fabric getting in the way. That's all taken care of. It's just the zipper in itself that I don't really like. Which, by the way, if you guys are sewers, or sewists rather, um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with zippers. See, some of them come out okay, but some of them come out all wonky like that. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I'm kind of just chalking it up to me just really learning and just trial and error to see, you know, how to get it working correctly. But if you guys have any tips, if you do so, um, and so with zippers, you can drop it down in the comments below. I would really appreciate that. So that's one bag. My second bag, which is my favorite one that I've made so far, is this one. Look how pretty this one came out. I just love it. This over here is denim. And this is a woodland animal fabric print. Super pretty. And I also have a tag on here. And it's really pretty and sheeny. If that's even a word. I don't even think sheeny is a word. So I'll just say a pretty sheen to it. But it also matches the inside. That's a really pretty sheen. Super pretty. This is my favorite project bag that I have made yet. Um, I'm hoping to really master the project bags and kind of get my own um, theme, if you will, to my bags, kind of my own little niche to them, um, and hopefully sell them in the future, have maybe shop updates and sell my bags, which would be nice. So this is my beginning stages, so be nice. Um, my line work still could use a little bit of help, although I think I'm doing pretty well with my line. I'm getting better as each project goes, which is really nice. Um, my next one I'll show you is a bigger one and another one of my favorites, which is this one. So pretty. Again, this is denim here at the bottom. That's a little dirty there. Um, this is denim at the bottom and a pretty flamingo print at the top. I used hot pink stitching. And I also made the tag denim. And I did pretty pink stitching. To match if you can see that and on the inside it's just a plain little gray material but it's a lot bigger this was one of my bigger bags 
that I've made so far. <laughs> so that's another finished object. Okay. And this is like, I think this might be, I'm sorry, I'm shaking the camera. I have a table with my stuff on it, but I'm not being aware of the camera shaking. So I apologize. Um, but this one is one of my first bags that I made and I didn't do it two tone, just regular. And this is, I think like a faux denim. It's not as denim material as the other ones that I just showed you. It's like a lighter denim. And this has this little strawberry tag, which it matches the inside. How cute is that? Oh, I just love it. I love that strawberry print. I could not give it up. Um, I've been shopping for fabrics a lot at Joann's, which I will get um, fat quarters, but I like going to the remnant section in Joann's because they have quite a bit of material um, for a cheaper price. It's either on clearance or um, it's just marked down because it's just remnants of fabric that they had left over. So me just still being a newbie with um, sewing, I kind of just grab what I can and the materials that I like to work with right now from the remnant section and get a really great deal on that. Um, and that's where I've kind of been getting my fabrics from. Um, and one more, which this was another first project that I made. This was probably my third project that I made for myself. <laughs> and it is this basket. How cute is this? You can tell I'm a beginner. This one is super wonky <laughs> with its line work and positioning and stuff. This one came out super wonky, but I love it. It's one of my first projects. It's a basket. And inside, I keep all of like my fat quarter fabrics and any type of scraps that I have. I just put it in here. And at the bottom, I made it sturdy by um, cutting a piece of cardboard to put at the bottom. And this uh, pattern I got from the Crafty Gemini on YouTube. She does a ton of sewing tutorials super beginner friendly. I love her style of teaching. I love looking at her do it. I'm more of a visual learner, so I learn a lot by seeing it done first and then I do it or I just follow along with it. But even hearing her, I, I understood what she was talking about and it was just very simplified for beginners. So I love her teaching patterns. Um, as far as project bags go, um, I got my pattern from Nicole Huloco. She has a couple of sewing tutorials on YouTube for project bags and a pouch, which I actually have one more finished object to show you. But I believe she's more into yarn now. Um, she has beautiful yarns. She hand dyes her own yarn. Um, so I'm not sure if she's doing any more sewing tutorials, but I grabbed it while I could. I got her free template and I've just kind of been working the project bags with the template and just kind of referring back to that. But another one that I have, which I made for myself, my mom, uh, my two daughters, and my sister's requesting one, but it's these little pouches. How cute is this? And this is another pattern from Nicole Huloco. You can see my line work over here was super wonked with the zipper trying to top stitch. But all the other lines I think came out pretty good. But it's really nice. I love it. I have my colored pencils in here. And as well, my, my kids, they have their pencils or their crayons or their artsy materials in there. And I just have my colored pencils in there super nice i want to make a couple more for myself i want to make one maybe for like makeup brushes that i decide to carry around with me or even to hold um lip products i don't know about you but i know in my purse i have a part for my lipsticks or my lip glosses and stuff um so it'd be nice to have like a little pouch i carry way too much lipstick and lip products with me so that would be nice and that is it for my finished objects. Um, again, um, it'd be nice with me with my sewing. I know it's not perfect, <laughs> but I love it because I'm learning and I love to learn new things and especially any type of crafty um, 
gateways or the therapeutic stuff. I just love it. I love any type of crafty stuff. I need something to soothe my mind and to get my mind off of stuff during the day. So sewing has quickly become a part of my routine um, along with my crocheting and knitting. So I guess we can go ahead and start with the whips section of this podcast. Um, I have quite a few whips to show you and they're all really in the bags that I showed you except for one whip that I have that I doesn't really have a home in a bag. <laughs> it's just something that I actually whipped up pretty, pretty fast, but I'll get to that in a minute. I will start with my first whip, which I have in my flamingo bag. And inside here, I am making the Raina shawl. It's my first knitted shawl. I'm really enjoying it. Look how pretty this is. Beautiful eyelet sections and garter stitch sections. But it's so pretty. So pretty. Uh, the yarn that I'm using for this is the Colorway Urchin by um, Backyard Fibers, I believe. I will list it in the description box. I really do believe it's Backyard Fibers, but I don't I don't want to quote myself on that just yet. I do have to take a look at the tag, but I do know the colorway is Urchin and it's beautiful. I believe it has silk in it, maybe even cashmere. So you can only imagine the drape that this is going to have and the softness to it. And this is my first knitted shawl. Again, my first time making a shawl. I love it. I love uh, the rhythm of the knitting on here. Um, I probably could have finished this already, but I definitely wanted to show it as a whip in um, the podcast. I can't wait for this to be done. I want it to be a nice, um, a nice length to it, not too small. Um, I'm using Chowgu Red Lace in size 5, 3.75 millimeter and again that's the Raina shawl that I'm making and this is the yarn I believe in my first podcast when I was showing a lot of the yarns that I got from the um the fiber festival in New Jersey this was one of them and I described it as it being like an angelic yarn and I still do believe that it's just angelic colors it's just beautiful super soft I cannot wait for this shawl to be done. So that is my first whip. My second whip I will show you here is living in this bag, one of my first project bags. And in here, I am making the Storybook Lane cardigan. As you can see here, and this is by Knits and Knots by Amy. Look how pretty. What drew me to this pat to this pattern in particular was the three quarter length on the cardigan, the three quarter length sleeve. So pretty and the length on it. I love a cardigan to cover my backside. Love it so much. And this calls for um, comfy cotton yarn by Lion Brand. And the colorway that I'm using is the one that she used for that pattern which is chai latte. Now, I'm not too fond of working with this yarn. I find that when I'm um, crocheting, it gets, the yarn gets splitted and I constantly have to kind of like adjust the stitch or redo the stitch or, I'm just not fond with working with the yarn. I probably will not work with it again, but I will um, stick it out for this cardigan. So right now I'm working on the front panel and this is what I have so far. So the bottom is a ribbing um, consisting of the front post, back post double crochet and double crochet through the body of it. I believe I have about 10 more rows to finish this first panel. And then I have to work on the second panel, the second front panel, the back panel and the sleeves. So this is going to take me a little while. Um, it is a thinner yarn. Let's see the weight of this yarn. What is it actually? It's a light three, so it's gonna take a while to finish the cardigan, but I definitely wanna get this cardigan done 
by the time spring is here because this is going to be a beautiful addition to the wardrobe for spring and something light to just kind of throw over if it's not too um, cold outside that you can just wear a sweater. So I'm excited for that to be done um, by springtime. Um, I guess I'll show you the one that's not living in anything. I guess so. I guess it's a stranded whip, we'll call it. <laughs> but this has been working up so fast. The pattern has been so easy to follow. Um, this is the cardiac, the cardiac, oh my goodness, the Kodiak bomber by Evelyn and Peter. Um, so it's really pretty. This is using Vanna's Choice um, worsted weight yarn in just like a light gray colorway. And the body of the sweater is using homespun, um, Lion Brand homespun thick and quick. So not the regular homespun, the thick and quick homespun. And let me tell you, I have this much of the sleeve going on here. I just have a little bit left um, for the sleeve on this side. And then I just have to work the sleeve here and I'm done. Um, I messed up here at the bottom. I kind of jumped the gun on the pattern and started this before I realized that she called for going up um, up the, the sides, up the panels, going up and around the collar. Um, so I kind of had to add that at the, I kind of had to add that at the end there. But it's okay, it's not a big deal to me. But this has been working up so fast. I cannot believe it. I think I started this last Saturday. It's Saturday today. So last Saturday, a week ago, I started it in the evening. That Sunday, I worked on it on and off. And I worked on it on and off one more day during the week. Like in the evening time, I did it for a little bit and then I worked on something else. And the other day I just started the sleeve and I was like, okay, I need to get one more yarn because I ran out of the skein and I went to Michael's and it wasn't there anymore. I was so sad. So I have to either order it online or go to the Lion Brand outlet that's in a town over from me, but it's been working up so fast. That's what I was trying to say. Um, working up super fast. I think if I calculate all the hours so far that I worked on it, it wouldn't even accumulate to half a day's worth of work. That's, I mean, literally, that is how fast this is going. I can't wait for this to be done, um, especially when it's still kind of colder out. I love the collar on it. It's so pretty and how it, oh, I just love it. It's so warm. It's going to be really cozy. I can't wait for that to be done. So that's that. Unfortunately, it's not living in anything. I should just put it in a in a basket or something, you know but it's all right. And um, I am working on, which is living in my little bowl. What I'm using is the Karen Pantone yarn. Um, I'm sorry, that's my kids if you heard anything. Um, I'm using the Karen Pantone X yarn, and this is black. I'm making a hat and it's going to be my first Fair Isle hat. I've never knitted color work um, before and I'm super excited to learn it. I'm really intrigued um, about color work and I want to make color work uh, sweaters in the future and to be, you know, just, just confident. So I guess I, I, I figured to myself that I would start small. So I'm just going to do a Fair Isle hat with really pretty like um, color work hearts on them you know like just the really simple pattern um and for a contrast for that I picked up the Karen Pantone which this is part of my acquisitions but this is in the colorway uh purple mist look how pretty purple that is so pretty so that's gonna be um with this black yarn in making a uh color work fair isle hat my first time doing it which I'm intimidated but I'm a quick learner I learn and when I want to learn something I will learn it so that's just living in here it's not in a bag um what was it I just lost my train of thought like a thought came in my head and then it just left me it'll come back but yeah it's just living in here it's a hat that I'm making and I'm using um 
Knitter's Pride, the Carbons, and this is in the size US 9, a 16 inch. So that's that. I have that all the way over here. Okay. Um, and the next whips that I have to show you are two socks that I'm working on. So my first sock is in here, and it is the pair to this sock here. So this is what I have so far. I like knitting my socks on nine inch circulars. Oh, something just fell on the table. I'm sorry, the camera keeps shaking. I have to get better at this and knowing where to place my camera. <laughs> so please bear with me. Um, but yeah, this is again in the colorway Clover and it is the pair to this sock. And I could have totally been done with this sock by now. I really could have, but I got so unmotivated when my husband put it on and I just saw it immediately that he wasn't going to like the feel of it, but I should just work through it quickly and get it done. Um, and it'll be a pair of socks that I could, um, use. I'm at the point of, uh, starting the, the heel flap on here. So I literally just kind of started doing the heel flap here. And this is again, Chow Gu nine inch um circular needles in 2.25 millimeter 2.75 millimeter sorry so that's that oh i have the tag on the yarn let me just make sure the colorway yeah clover colors is the colorway clover colors patton's croy so that's one sock whip my next sock whip is living in my favorite bag so far. Oh, just look at it. But if you can see, I chopped the poor bear's head off. I didn't mean to do that. I realized it afterwards. <laughs> but what can you do? This other side is good, though. I love it. This is probably my happiest make of a bag so far. And what's living in here is my Glimmer Socks. And this is a pattern by um, the Blue Mouse Knits, the Blue Mouse. This is her pattern, um, the Glimmer Sock pattern. And this is just a uh, two by two ribbing pretty much throughout the whole sock. Um, it doesn't have a long leg on it. I believe it's like a medium sized leg. And the Knit 2 Pearl 2 is all throughout the leg area and it continues Knit 2 Pearl 2 through the top of the sock, but at the bottom is just plain stock, stockinette. And again, I'm using um, Chow Gu for this one as well. And the beautiful yarn that you see here is uh, Allison by the Lofty Loops. Um, Christmas Cheer colorway. I could not wait to get my hands on this. I ordered this when she had it as a pre-order before she, um, as a pre-order before she was making them. But look how pretty this is. I don't even see this just to be a Christmas color. Like I don't feel obligated that I have to only use this in the holiday time. Um, because once this is done, I think I'm going to totally wear it year round for sure. Look at that. So pretty. I love this colorway. It's got beautiful greens and bright pinks and reds and oranges in here. Oh, it's just so pretty. And I can't wait to have this worked up as a pair of socks. I can't wait. Again, this is the glimmer sock pattern that I'm working on here. And again, it's living in this bag. So that is all for my works in progress. I guess now we can start with the acquisitions portion of this podcast. I don't have too much to share with you. Um, I already shared one, which I guess I'll just get started, which is the Karen Pantone um, X yarn. This is my first time working with this yarn and I am quite pleased. I do love the feeling of the yarn. I believe it's, it's like very silky to work with. It works up very nicely. Um, there's no uh, splitting in the yarn while I'm working with it. It's really pretty. And this is a really pretty purple, purple mist. 
and I guess this would be one acquisition together because I bought it as a pair for the Fair Isle hat. This is just plain black and the contrasting I'm using is the purple with it for the hat, the Fair Isle hat. So I'm excited to work that up for sure. Um, my next acquisition would be a, a Patton's Croy and this is going to be for my youngest daughter. She really wants me to make her a pair of socks. When she saw that I was making um, her dad, my husband, a pair of socks, she immediately wanted a pair and I let her pick this out in the store actually. She loves rainbow things, so this is gonna suit her really well for her tiny little feet. She still has tiny feet to me. She's four. <laughs> so this will be a pair of socks for her. Um, my next acquisition, I'll show this one last. I'm going to grab this one first. And it is my Sandy by the Lakeside project bag. I was dying to get my hands on one of her project bags. I believe this was from her shop update, not the last one. The last one was her VKL one that she um, did an update with the, the leftovers that she had, the City Lights bag. Oh, excuse me. I just bet. I'm sorry. <laughs> but she did a shop update from the bags that she had left over from VKL, and it was the City Lights bag. I would have loved to got my hands on one of those, but I just couldn't. Um, but they're super nice. And the the one prior to that one was her leather collection. I think she had two leather collection updates. And then, so long story short, I think it was like November update. I think it was in November. <laughs> I should have just said that from the beginning. I was rambling. But I am so happy to have my hands on one of her bags. I love her signature um, hot pink surging there um, with her tag by the lakeside. And it comes with a beautiful tassel. And the inside is this beautiful fabric. And I love her bags because she's just, um, she has such a sophisticated feel to them. I love watching her, her podcasts. I love um, her vlogmases. I just love them. I could not stop watching them. I had to make sure that I watched it every time she uploaded it. Um, she's just very soothing. She has a very soothing personality, um, very sophisticated. I, I just love her. I love her. I adore her. Um, so this is one of my other acquisitions, which this is probably my most exciting because I wanted to get my hands on one of her bags so bad. And now I have an acquisition that is nothing fiber related. It is a sewing acquisition and it is a fabric. But you um, fiber lovers out there are going to love this because take a look at this fabric. How pretty is this? Look at all those llamas. And alpacas. Just look at them with the cactuses. Oh, this is so pretty. I don't think I'm going to make a project bag out of this because I don't want to like cut off half of the llama or just not put this fabric to good use. It's kind of canvassy. It's a canvassy fabric. Um, I really can't even tell you the material, but I can say that it's like a like a canvas type of feel to it. Um, but I think I'm gonna make this into a tote bag. So you, I can showcase and show off the fabric um, on a bigger scale rather than just a small project bag. But if I do have any left over from making the tote bag, I totally will do a project bag with it. I think it'll look nice paired with the denim. But yep, yeah, that is all of my acquisitions. Um, I guess we can move on to the blather or chatter segment of this podcast. Although I don't have too much to talk about, um, again, I have been really enjoying sewing. I hope to take that up um, and learn a lot more. I would love to be able to sew garments in the future and be able to sew my children clothes. That would be super cool. But my main focus right now with sewing is the project bags. I think Sandy um, from Sandy by the Lakeside, she's 
inspired me to want to make project bags. Um, it's just so fun and actually diving in and trying them myself and seeing how they're coming out. I think I'll be really good at mastering it um, within the next couple of months. And I hope to hopefully by the summertime be able to have my own little shop with my own project bags. But I want to again have like a nice little like theme to my bags that people will know me by my my theme, you know, people will know it's a Christina bag. <laughs> But I'm not sure if I shared this already, but you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, and Pinterest as The Blissful Stitch. Um, I'm not as active as I should be on my Instagram. I really have to get used to taking progress photos and um, finished object photos. I'm just not a good picture person in general in life. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to keep up with that. Uh, but I, I'm really aspiring to do that. I want to make this also a weekly podcast. I know that I mentioned that I wanted it to be bi-weekly, but I feel like if I make it bi-weekly, I'm more likely to um, make excuses as to why I sh don't have to record or it's been a while. I don't, you know, I, I just want to stick to a weekly podcast, even if it's a little bit that I'm showing you. Um, I'm still taking you along with my progress and it's keeping me accountable to get things done to be able to show you guys. Um, yeah, but last night, um, I guess non, non, uh, non podcast related, but, uh, me and my husband went to a Casting Crowns concert. Um, they are a Christian contemporary band. Um, we went with my parents, which was nice. It was like a double date. We went out to dinner and we went to the concert and um, it was nice to be kid free and it was a really awesome concert. It was great. I love going to their concert. This is my second time going to one of their concerts. Um, so it was super enjoyable. I loved it. Uh, we did get home pretty late. We fell asleep like babies and um, today, uh, nothing much, just my husband went to go pick up our kids. This is my second time recording this podcast. I tried it earlier, um, but just my whole setup and recording situation just was not working out. But I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, we're not going to be doing much. Today is almost over, so I'm just going to be cleaning up. And tomorrow, um, my youngest daughter, Julia, who's four, um, we're having an, uh, we're going to an open house for starting her for preschool. So we're excited about that. It's definitely in due time that she start her preschool. We've been very blessed and lucky to be able to have her home. Um, but it, it's, I, I, I feel strongly about getting her into school now and, um, her getting into the school atmosphere. But that's about it. I, again, will like to do this as a weekly podcast. So I will see you guys next week. Again, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I hope you have a blessed week ahead. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. I'll see you guys next time.